Hi everyone, Happy New Year. I don't get a lot of time to paint lately because I've been so busy making tutorials, but last week I took some time off and I painted a little Willy Wang tail in watercolour. Hi everyone, I'm Louise de Massey and welcome to my channel. Before I start with this tutorial, I just want to give a heartfelt thank you to everyone who has contacted me from around the world about these terrible bushfires that we're experiencing here in Australia. I feel overwhelmed with gratitude that you are thinking of us over here. We are safe where we are, but we did have a scare back in November when the fire department advised us to leave our home. It was shortly after I filmed this video for YouTube. You can see the orange color outside and the ash falling behind me. Now, the air quality here was terrible for weeks after, but we were lucky because the fire went in a different direction to our home. My heart is aching for all of our amazing wildlife. So I'm going to be teaming up with a few other artists and we're going to be raising some money for WIRES, which is a wildlife rescue organization here in Australia. So keep an eye out for that if you follow me on Instagram. This little bird is one of Australia's most well-known fantails. We call it a willy wagtail. They're active little birds that flit around the garden, fanning out their tails as they hunt for insects. They're only about 20 centimeters long, but they've got loads of personality. I've painted them before, but I just wanted to do a quick study to demonstrate how I mixed black using three colors. Pre-mixed black watercolor can be a bit flat and dead looking, so it's good to know how to mix your own. If you've done some of my tutorials, you know that I do use pre-mixed black sometimes. I have used it in the past when I've painted some zebras, and I've also used it on my crows and also my magpies. I blend the black with other colors. Sometimes I'll work wet on wet with it and I'll mix it with other colors on the paper. And other times I'll glaze a transparent wash of it over another color. For this little painting, I mixed my own. So let's take a look at that. This is a Winsor & Newton watercolour journal. It's been a while since I've painted in it. So today I'm going to paint this little willy wag tail. I'm going to use just three colours for this painting. This is permanent alizarin crimson. Some French ultramarine here. And some quinacridone gold. And these are three Winsor & Newton colours. Now I've just placed these paints around the outside rim of the plate here, just so that the watery paint will fall down into the middle. Now I can use these three colours to mix a black. So I just mix the three of them together. And I keep mixing until I get a colour that I like. And I try to avoid washing my brush out when I mix the colour just because if I do, I keep diluting the mixture and I want it as dark as I can get it. Now I can adjust the colour temperature of this black. I can make it warmer by adding more of the alizarin crimson or I can make it cooler by adding more of the French ultramarine. So I just test it out on a piece of scrap paper until I get a colour that I'm happy with. I think I'm going to lean towards the cooler colour, so I'll add more of the blue. I'm just going to start wetting the bird's head here. I'm using a Da Vinci Maestro brush. This is a Series 35 and it's a number 5. And I want to work on the damp paper here, so I'm just putting some water on the black parts. Now on my reference photo, there's a sheen that runs down the side of his head. So I'm going to just paint some of the French ultramarine where I see that lighter colour. And then when I put the black on, 
it will just blend with it because the paper's wet. So this is French ultramarine that I'm using and all I'm doing as I paint is I'm just looking at the reference photo and I'm just putting the paint where I see that lighter sheen on the side. Okay, so my paper's still nice and wet, so what I can do now is just put the black paint on there and it will blend with that blue that I've just put there. Okay, so now I've picked up the black that I mixed up. I'm just painting that onto the damp paper here. I paint carefully around the little white markings that are on the side of the head and also around the eye. And I just use my brush right up on its tip so that I can get into those little small areas. Paint around the eye carefully. Around the beak. And there's a white patch on the side of his cheek here that I have to avoid as well. So then I just keep going around. I'm not going to put the paint over the top of that blue area that I painted. I want to try and reserve that. So I'm just painting around it and the black will just blend with it because the paper is wet. It keeps all those paint edges soft. So now I can take this colour down the back and here I'm painting on the dry paper. Take it around the front of the wing here. Because the paper's wet, the colours just blend together. There's no hard paint edges showing anywhere. So now my brush is just damp and I'm just running it along the edge of the paint there just to allow some of that paint to bleed onto the white feathers. That just softens that edge where the black meets the white. And now I've got some more of that dark colour and I just want to put it on the back here. I can paint a few flicks off the side just by pulling the damp paint out onto the dry paper. And I'm just going to speed up the next section. Just putting some water on the paper here at the front and I'm going to use a really pale wash of that colour that I mixed up just for those white feathers there. So everything has dried and I can see that I've been a bit heavy handed with the blue. So what I want to do is just turn it down and make the colour look a bit more black. So I've re-wet the paper and I've adjusted my mix so that I've got more of the alizarin crimson and quinacridone gold and less of the blue. And now I'm just painting this over the top of that first wash. Now the first wash had dried but I re-wet it with water just so that I can work on the damp paper and keep all those soft paint edges. I still want the blue to show through but not as much as I had it. So I'm just wetting the top of the wing here with some water because again I want to work on the damp paper. So I put the black on and then I use my brush just to paint those feather separations that are there. So they were on dry paper, I've just pushed the brush into the dry paper. Now you might be noticing as I put the black on the paper that it's a different colour in different areas. Sometimes it's darker, sometimes it's lighter, sometimes it looks a bit more blue, other times it looks a bit more yellow or brown. I'll show you why as soon as I finish this little feather here. So why the colour sometimes varies is because the colours in the plate will separate from one another. So it just depends where I put my brush into the puddle as to what the colour is going to be. So if I pick it up here, there's my colour. But if I pick it up in a different spot, so over here, the colour is slightly different, it's got a bit more yellow in it. Sometimes I might want the colour to be a bit cooler or more blue. So I'll run my paint over the blue paint, pick up the puddle of black, and then I get that cooler colour. Other times I might want a very pale grey, so I'll just use a wet brush 
and I'll just pick up a tiny bit of paint at the side here and that's when I get that really light colour. So that's why you'll see the colour differ as I paint. Okay so back to the tail. I'm painting this on the dry paper. I want it to be a bit cooler at the top here so I've just wiped my brush over the blue paint there. And now I'm dropping some water in just to disturb the pigment and create some texture. I'll paint the next one. And up here I'm just going to use a damp brush just to take a bit of paint off. So I'm just using my brush like it's a sponge. And I'll do the same thing here, I'll just take a bit of paint off. So now I'll just paint this tail feather in the middle of those two. Just run it down the centre. It's slightly different colour to the other two as well. Now with these wing feathers here you can see that the black has got quite a bit of that quinacridone gold mixed into it. It's almost a brown. So I'm just painting that on the dry paper. And then I'm going to come back over the top of it with some really thick dark paint to add the detail. But before I do that I just want to change the colour of one of them. So I'm just going to pick up some of the blue and wipe it into the mix. And I'm going to paint over the top here just to change the colour. So that makes that feather at the back a darker colour. And now I'm just going to use my brush to take off a bit of paint here as well. So for the legs now I just want a soft grey. So I'm just going to use my damp brush just to pick up a tiny bit of paint here at the side. So not a lot of paint on my brush. It's fairly light in colour. And that'll give me that light grey that I can paint the legs on with. Okay, so back onto these other feathers. I'm just filling them in just on the dry paper. So this is the light grey again. So I just picked it up from the side of the palette. And I'm also going to drop some of the quinacridone gold on there while that paint's damp. It's just a bit of reflective light. It gives it a bit of a glow in those lighter areas. I'll do the same thing on the front here. I'll just wet it with water. Now I'll drop some of that quinacridone gold on there. So now I want some really thick paint to paint the detail on those flight feathers. So I'm just mixing up a new patch with not a lot of water in it. So it's fairly thick pigment and I just pick it up with a damp brush. And that gives me that really dark paint there that I can paint that detail on with. So I'm just painting over the top of the dry paper here. I'm just going to take a brush too and smudge a bit of it so that it's not all even. Okay so just on this feather right here I don't like that light patch so I'm just putting a bit more paint over the top of that. I think it was too light. Okay so now for the eye I'm just going to paint that with that really dark thick pigment just with my liner brush. Put some of the darker paint on that top of the beak there. I'm going to use a damp brush just to soften that paint edge. So now I've got a damp brush. You can run it along the paint edge and that just softens it. It's not such a hard line there. And then when that's dry I can paint in the bottom beak. So now I've got some Winsor & Newton white ink on my liner brush and I'm just going to run that around the outside edge of the eye because I've lost that. I just want to bring it back in. And I'll also put a bit of that white ink around the white spots, the white patches. A little bit here just to extend these feathers as well. 
And now I'm just using my Micron Pigma pen just to tidy up the shape of the eye. And I've got a scrubber brush here that I'm just taking off a few highlights with so the brush is damp but the paper is dry. It's just a stiff brush and it just takes a bit of paint off and creates a few more highlights. And to finish off I'm just darkening this back section of the head here just with a bit more of the darker colour. It's got less blue in it now. Just painting that on the dry paper. I can soften away any edges that I don't like with a damp brush. So there's my finished painting. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already because I make tutorials like this one all the time. Thanks again and I'll see you soon.